Lynn, it's so wonderful to have you a part of our Learn to Listen series. So thank you for joining me. Well, thank you for having me. It's an honor to be here. I'm excited about our talk. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Well, I'd love for you to just start off about um, just your involvement in dance and ministry as a believer artist. You now you have a huge um, following. You've got a wonderful conference that you run, um, writings, teachings. You just have been a beautiful influence in the realm of Christian dance ministry. So first of all, thank you for all of that hard work and that dedication. And just please share more about you and just how you got involved and what your mission and goal is. Well, praise God. Um, thank you for that. Um, yeah, it's it's been a lifelong journey. I started dancing when I was seven back in 1967 and um, grew up in the church and had never seen dance in church. And one day, um, well, I've been, and I was in ballet company and, you know, college dance companies and, um, you know, so I've danced for 54 years, <laughs> really. And, uh, but I had never heard of dancing in church. I got saved in 1978 and still, you know, was dancing companies at college. I just never seen it in church. Well, this one time I was in, you know, a small fellowship group and, um, they had a visiting minister come from out of town and I was dressed in a nice dress and, you know, uh, like heels and, you know, look dressed nice. And um, this prophetess came up to me and I, I had never heard of prophecy at that point. Just like, what is this? <laughs> you know, and she came right up to my nose and she says, you will dance before the Lord. And I was like, okay, well, one, how does she know I'm a dancer? And two, how do you do that? What does that look like? <laughs> and so it was about two weeks after that, I went to a workshop, a, a Christian dance workshop. And there were like a hundred people there all back, back in the day, everybody wore white dresses, you know? And I was like, oh my gosh, you know, my eyes were opened. I was like, I can't believe that you can do this in church. <laughs> so I had, it, it transformed my life. And I immediately went to my pastor and said, can I get a few people together and, you know, choreograph, um, you know, something and present a dance? And he was like, sure, go for it. And um, so I did. And, and it was just glorious <laughs> to be able to, you know, dance in church. And um, then I, I caught wind of um, the Feast of Tabernacles that was happening in Bradenton, Florida every year at Christian Retreat and um, went to their practice, long story short, and the um, dance leader there, um, anointed woman of God, um, but she had never had any dance training. And um, she asked me to choreograph her visions so it's like the Lord, you know, would give her these vast visions of what to do for the feast. And, and um, okay, for this song, I see this. And then she would share with me her vision. I would choreograph the dance for the dancers. And uh, we did that for like three years. It was glorious. It was just a wonderful experience. Um, and then I moved to another church and I was again the assistant dance leader and very content being the assistant. <laughs> I didn't want to be a leader. Um, and so at that church, my dance leader moved away uh, to another state and my pastor said, okay, you're it. <laughs> like, oh no, I'm not ready. <laughs> I want to go back to the other church where I could be an assistant again. You know, he says, no, no, you're ready. And so, you know, I began, you know, to, um, you know, grow the team and, you know, pray about choreography and the Lord would just give me dances and, and whatnot. And um, it, it's just gone from there. There's, you know, you were asking about, you know, listening uh, to the voice of God and, and how that, how that happens. Well, um, for me, uh, you know, sometimes I get, you know, an impression, you know, from the Lord and sometimes I'll see visions. I often will see visions, you know, when I pray about choreography or pray about a dance. Um, but sometimes I'll hear the actual voice of God. And um, 
this one particular time that I heard the voice of God, it transformed my entire life and ministry and direction for my life. I was um, planning at this other church that I went to, I was, um, felt led to do a Tuesday night meeting and open it up to the community. And back then we wrote letters. I didn't even have a computer back then. It was like 1994 or something like that. And um, so I, you know, wrote, started to write some letters and I was going to send them to the area pastors, the area churches to have them ask their dance leaders or their dancers to come to this Tuesday night meeting. And I was going to do some choreography and creative worship and different things. And I was in no big hurry to put the letters out. Um, so I was in church one Sunday morning and I was sitting in the front row and I was listening to the pastor preach, you know, right in front of me. But in the back of my head, I heard God say, I heard his voice clear as a bell. He said, put those letters out right away. I was like, okay. So I stayed after church and borrowed the church's um, computer. That's because I, I didn't have one. And so I, I typed out the letters and got the envelopes ready. I put them in Monday's mail. Wednesday, when I got back um, from church, from Wednesday church, there were two messages on my answering machine. One was from KB Productions in New York City, and the other was from Tom Brooks with Integrity Hosanna Music. And Hosanna Music was, Integrity was real popular in the 90s. Um, and I thought, oh my, well, how did they find me and what do they want, you know? And so I was very intimidated, too intimidated to call Tom Brooks. So I called KB Productions. I said, well, what is this? And they said, well, this is for the Ron Cannoli video, Sing Out. We want some, we need somebody to coordinate the area dancers in Florida. And, um, and I said, well, how did you find me? And she said, well, we asked this one particular church if they had somebody that could do that. And they said, the, the secretary of that church said, well, we can't, but this letter was on my desk today. This woman could probably help you. <laughs> and so, um, but the important thing about that was I held two auditions, one in Sarasota and one in uh, Lakeland. Um, over a hundred dancers auditioned for to be in the Ron Cannoli video and uh, you know, did the choreography for the you know, audition piece and everything. And, um, it was from that audition, a group of people came from Bishop Bill Hammond's church, um, Christian International in Northern Florida. It was a pretty large group came to audition. They liked how I taught the audition piece. They asked me to teach at their um, arts conference, which was very large every year in um, the 90s. And so it was from there, somebody from Alabama came and said, can you come to my church and do a workshop? And I was like, okay. <laughs> and so somebody from Louisiana was at the church in Alabama and they said, can you come to Louisiana and do a workshop? I was like, okay. And somebody from Texas was at Louisiana. They said, can you come to Texas? And, and it just mushroomed from there. I was eventually doing a conference or workshop every month, sometimes twice a month. And the Lord, it was all God. But we didn't have social media back then. You know, we didn't have, um, I didn't even have a website. It was like, you know, it was totally God. And it just grew and grew and grew and grew. But it was all out of that one act of obedience, of hearing God's voice and acting on it in obedience. So that's so beautiful. Wow, that's that's so rich to know that he definitely aligns and appoints and orchestrates everything. And just from that act of you choosing to listen, that he was really able to get those things in motion that I believe he already had in motion, that he already had orchestrated. And um, wow, what a beautiful, rich heritage. So for you, this listening, cultivating listening, um, that you hear the audible voice of God, that you see visions and, and pictures, images. Are there other ways that you really feel like you align yourself and hear how God is communicating and speaking? Well, you know, through the spoken word, you know, through messages and, of course, through the word, you know, as I study the word and, you know, I hear, you know, things will pop out, <laughs> you know, um, like right now I'm, I'm just... 
it, I go through seasons um, about how I worship or pray, but it's always every morning. I mean, I've cultivated that, you know, habit, if you will, <laughs> to, to read and pray or, or worship every morning. And it comes and goes in seasons. Like there was a season where I would worship for like an hour every morning. And um, then there were seasons where I would worship for a little bit, pray for a little bit, read the word for a little bit, you know, then there were seasons where I would just pray, you know, and, and until it was done. And then there were times where I would just read the word and pray, you know, and, but it was always every morning developing that, that habit. Um, and, but it was always in the quietness, you know, of that prayer time, what, whatever that looked like, whether it was the worship or the word or, um, you know, just prayer where I would be quiet before the Lord on a regular basis. And, you know, sometimes I would get, you know, visions. Um, in fact, uh, well, one of your questions was, um, you know, about vision you know, for the ministry. And um, it, if you don't mind me sharing this story about vision, um, the Lord, uh, well, our pastor back in 1994, kind of commissioned the church to fast and pray for 30 days for your vision for the church, vision for your ministry, vision for yourself. And I prayed, I fasted, I didn't get anything. It was like 30 days and I didn't hear anything, didn't sense anything, didn't see anything, was nothing. Then on the 30th day, the Lord showed me, it was almost like an open heaven experience. It was, I just saw this vision for an art center. And, you know, I saw classes and, you know, the building, the location, and different teachers and different kinds of classes. And, you know, I mean, it was, it was huge, it was huge vision. So being in my thirties back then and um, young and ambitious, I, you know, immediately wanted to find this miraculous place, you know, <laughs> this, this building. Um, I wanted to fulfill the vision right then and there, you know, cause I knew that I knew that God wanted this fulfilled. And, you know, here it is, how many years later, 25 years later, <laughs> and never got the building, but it took all those years for God to work in me, you know, change my heart, um, grow in godly character, um, learn about, you know, relationships and relating to others and listening and building other people up. And, now he gave me the online school and I thought, you know, I, it, I don't think that it deferred from or deterred from the vision that he gave me. I believe that the vision changed over the years to match today's technology. And, you know, I, I would never have known of this online vehicle for a school back in 94 when I didn't even have a computer. And so, but God, by listening to his voice, following his leading, and continuing to pursue him and the vision that he gave me, um, over all these years, he transformed me and transformed the vision. And now it's it's just a flourishing school and now others are being raised up to go out and you know to teach and whatnot so um I kind of sidetracked there about vision but <laughs> so <clears throat> yeah that's that well is a part of it and a part of that is the listening and i think sometimes we may feel like we hear a word from god or are inspired by his the scriptures or have other science some kind of commonality with other believer artists or other believers and it really takes that determination to listen to understand what it was that we heard and a part of that for me in my season of life being in my 50s that it's trusting in his timing as well and so we may hear or understand or believe that he's speaking that some promise is going to be fulfilled and yet is it for today right. and it might take 20 years or 30 years and what i'm learning more and more in my own journey is 
sometimes God is incredibly patient and very, very slow. And in that slowness, which is wonderful, that's where we get to continue to develop in our faith, in our trust, um, in our character, in so much of how we can become more and more like God. So I, I appreciate that's a, a beautiful story. So as you are in that place now in leadership for a, you know, a long time leader and cultivating and um, influential in the lives of others and cultivating other leaders, what do you feel like are some of those important qualities that a leadership um, or a leader should or could develop in their own life? What do you value in even in your own life continues to be cultivated or what do you really value for others to keep cultivating? Well, that, that's a good question. Um, I, something that I really value is um, valuing people's time and expectations. Um, I, I feel like something that would be good for leaders, and it took me a while to learn, is <clears throat> say what you're going to do and then do what you're going to say you're going to do when you said you're going to do it. And um, I have to share this story. Uh, I went to a, a ballet class, and actually, this was years ago. I, I would go regularly to this wonderful ballet class for adults, which is rare. It's hard to find, you know, good ballet class for adults. And um, it was supposed to start at 11 o'clock in the morning. And so I was there about 10 to 11 and I'd go in the other room and I'd put on my ballet shoes and, I'd, you know, take my water and my towel and I'd stand at the bar, find my place at the bar and I was waiting for class to begin. You know, I was always you know, a few minutes early and ready to go so that I'd be ready to go at 11 o'clock. And um, I'd wait and wait. And then a couple people would mosey on in and then, you know, a few minutes later, a couple more people would come in and, and I'm thinking, you know, so finally he started the class at 1115. And I was like, well, you know, I could have come at 10 after 11 had I known we were going to start at 1115. And, you know, he would do that often. He would always wait for the people to arrive before he would start. And then after a while, he said, well, you know, nobody comes to 1115. Let's just start the class at 1115. Okay, fine. So I get there at 10 after and I put my shoes on and I stand at the bar and I wait. And then it's like 1130. And then, okay, we'll do class at 1130. And then it's quarter to 12. Well, let's do class at quarter to 12 because people don't come until I said, you know, if you keep doing this, we're going to be in the kids class at 430. <laughs> you know, I said, why don't you just start on time? And I said, people don't want to miss plies, you know, just, just start on time. He says, well, I have to have six people in class before I can start. I said, but, you know, if you started on time, they would learn to come, you know. So <laughs> ever since then, I just said, okay, I am starting on time. I don't care if there's only one person there. <laughs> and I've always done that. You know, and people have learned, okay, Pastor Lynn starts on time. <laughs> you better be back from lunch. You know, you better be there. She's going to start. And, you know, so, um, and it's also important, I think, to end on time. You know, because like, especially if you're doing a dance to practice time or something like that, you're supposed to go from seven to nine. Don't do like, um, well, let's just do this dance one more time. Let's do it a couple more times and then we'll get out of here. It's 15 minutes, okay, 15, 9, 15, you know, and they'll smile, but in their hearts, they're thinking, oh, gee, I got to get home. I got to put the kids to bed. My husband's waiting for me. You know, it's like, I, I really need to get home, but, you know, and so then people kind of lose respect and, you know, come to realize that, you know, maybe you're not a person of your word or something. So I think that's one real important thing is to, you know, do what you say you're going to do when you say you're going to do it. And, you know, that's, this is kind of an important tip, I think. <laughs> so. That's really beautiful. And I appreciate that. And, um, when we have so much going on in our lives and they're so busy and so full, it's, it really does speak at times unless there's something, you know, circumstantial that occurs. It's, it's a respect as well and honoring. And so it's, I think that's beautiful as we continue to, you know, keep cultivating those relationships. 
as we're looking at um, <clears throat> just what's happening out in the world today, in particular related to dance and the arts and ministry, I just would love to hear your take on what you have seen transpire since the 90s and where things are even with your ministry and what you're doing with Dancing for Him and how that vision that God's giving you, what, what do you even see coming in the future? Yeah, that, that's a good question too. Um, you know, our creator God is a creative God that created creative beings. And I, I really believe that as long as there are Christians who have creative gifting that will have a place to utilize that gift or present or, you know, be creative. And, um, you know, you can say, well, you know, maybe it's not as prevalent in the church as it was, but, you know, I've traveled all over and I still see dance in the church. You know, I still see dance teams, uh, you know, so, you know, we can, we can say that it is diminished, but, you know, I think there'll always be churches, there'll always be places where people can dance before the Lord or paint, you know, prophetic painting is coming into vogue more so. And, um, you know, even though there are, um, how do I say, uh, younger generation kind of churches that are kind of seeker friendly, um, I, I've noticed that sometimes, you know, churches like that, they, they may not quite embrace the dance because they don't want to scare people away, <laughs> you know, because if somebody who's brand new, they come in and they see some dancers over here on the side, they'd be like, Oh my goodness, what is this? <laughs> you know, but the, the churches have been more established. It seems like they're more open to having the dance. You know, they're not as intimidated by uh, the arts being displayed in church. But also, it seems that more people are um, evangelizing with the arts, you know, going out to the streets or to the nursing homes or to, you know, places where people are unsaved. Um, so there's, there's that more so growth, but primarily the change that I've seen is the, um, uh, advent of social media and video and YouTube and, um, you know, knowledge and learning is much more accessible. Um, you know, before, you know, you would have to go to a class or go to a conference to receive information on how to grow your ministry or how to dance even. Um, but now with the advent of, you know, all the social media, there's, you know, training is much more accessible. Um, so even <clears throat> likewise with the vision that God gave me with the school, it's all online. It's an online school. So, you know, they, um, study my books and DVDs and, you know, write essays and do video uploads and, you know, uh, things like that. And I've seen the students just grow tremendously, but it's amazing how we can have such camaraderie, such fellowship and um, uh, online, you know, <laughs> but we do also get together, you know, like the graduation retreat is like a big family reunion. It's because we've been seeing each other online for the entire year. And then we get together for the graduation. It's just, it's wonderful. Um, so I, I believe we still need that person to person fellowship, you know, the, you know, a real person, you know, being with real people, but it's amazing how we can grow and fellowship on the internet. I mean, my students come from all over the world. I mean, it's just, I, I weep sometimes when I see somebody from Taiwan or, um, you know, Canada, you know, just all different countries all over and um, hear these different dialects and their their language when they struggle with English even you know it's just it blesses me so much that this vehicle is available now to you know reach people and and teach and whatnot so um mm, that's lovely well it's so wonderful that you've got that 
global impact with the work that God has given you. And I can easily imagine back in the 90s when all of this started to come about that that wasn't probably a part of your um, just imagination, knowing how God would lead and guide and direct you. So as you have written, and I'd love to make sure at the end of this that we're putting links to your books and to your website and um, conference and all of that. So I'll make sure that we get that um, accessible to other people who are really eager for more education. But just in closing, as we're looking at the value of leaders and leadership and um, just what you have to offer from your wealth of wisdom, is there anything else that you would love to impart or to share uh, to, to leave us with? I would say, don't be afraid to invest or impart to others. Um, when I first started, you know, in my 20s or early 30s, I would be very intimidated by people who are more skilled than me, or I felt like, oh, this person is such a good teacher, or whatever, you know, I would be very intimidated, and my pastor told me at the time, you know, don't, don't you be intimidated, you're the called and chosen and appointed leader, um, you know, don't let others intimidate you, and it took me a while to get a hold of that, that it's okay to train others <clears throat> the sign of a good teacher is when your student even supersedes and passes you and does greater exploits, you know, and it, it's okay to raise up others where it may feel like even you've raised them up to be your competition, but God never diminishes what he's placed in your heart. You know, what he's, uh, the calling that he's given you, God has never diminished that. So it, it's, it's so good and it's fulfilling to me to see others be raised up and to, you know, flourish and grow and write their own books and do their own videos and do their own conferences and, you know, even their own schools and things like that, you know. So I would say don't be intimidated by those that are that are coming up, especially if you've raised them yourself, <laughs> you know, if you've trained them yourself, it's it's an honor. I'm I'm honored when people use my choreography or I see um, you know a school project that they've done turn into their book or turn into a video or you know they have their own workshops and things. It's you know so that's one thing I would you know, leave you with it. Don't be afraid to invest or impart in, into others. It's, it's such a blessing. We forget sometimes that um, we're on the same team. Right. We really are. It's God's kingdom and whatever we can contribute to God's kingdom to encourage, inspire, um, to even have that expectation, how we know that God does exceedingly abundantly beyond what we can ask or imagine well, he does that in the lives of people too, in the lives of people that, like Jesus, an incredible example, right? That he, isn't he from this little town of Nazareth? And who could he be? But he has come to be something that's so amazing and so magnificent. And so to even have those expectations that God will do something beyond in those that we have interaction with and are able to impart to. So that's a really beautiful word. And it's spoken from a place of, <clears throat> maturity and spoken from a place of being self-confident and I think that that's something that's so incredibly important that we are assured in what God has called us to and in doing so we aren't seeing other people around us as a threat they really are linking arms together to fulfill a greater vision than what we could do on our own so but that's a beautiful word so thank you for that and thank you so much for your time today. I really appreciate uh, learning more about you. And I know that our viewers will also enjoy um, hearing your words of wisdom and having access to your resources and your school. And so I'm, I'm excited to share that with others. So, and thank you very, very much for your precious time and just for your wealth of wisdom and your stick to your dedication, um, your determination that um, has led you to this place and where you are in your life. There's so much more. There's still so much more yet to come. So I just bless you in that, in God's name. Amen. Thank you. And thank you for having me. It's been a blessing. <laughs> thank you. All right.